Spook. Yes. What did you think about the alternate strip, the Crows wore? Are you talking about the bright orange jumper? Yeah. What about the brown shorts that some of them were wearing? By the way, I got shit in my shoe. Can I borrow your keys? Welcome to the Collingwood Rant. I'm Sly. And I'm, it's all rosy because we're 12 and 2, Spook. Spook! Yes! What a win. Down for three and a half quarters. Horrible umpiring against us. And against all odds, we turned the tide and... Shit, sorry, that's the wrong game. Commented on the wrong game. Sorry, what an idiot I am. What did you think of this game? Dominated the first half. uh, Got obliterated in the third quarter. And typical Collingwood fight back in the last. No, the um, the, the first half was 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 good, and um, I'm sitting at the ground. I was getting um, into casual mode. I was pretty relaxed. I had the uh, the Ugg boots on, and uh, I was drinking pina coladas and lounging back in a chair, thinking this will be an easy win. And then uh, bang, the world got turned upside in that third quarter. That would be our worst quarter for the year, wouldn't it? Score wise, I think. Yeah, like I even imagine. when we got. Obliterated by Brisbane, I think they only kicked five. I think Brisbane kicked a batch over two quarters. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I mean. And um, but yeah, this we got systematically destroyed. It was actually like watching an avalanche in slow motion. It was incredible, um, and that's credit to the Crows. They played exceptionally well that quarter. So let's just look at the selection. Ginevan mm-hmm. late withdrawal. Now he's in the reserves. That Harvey Harrison selected in front of him. I think he's saying a little something. What's it saying? Fuck off. No, but it's oh. either, you know, scuttle buddies that Ginevan was a late withdrawal last week due to disciplinary reasons. I didn't hear that. Um, do do? Yeah, I've just told you. And What, did he not listen in class? I don't know. But um, now you get Harvey Harrison, who's you know only been playing in bits and pieces. He's got a bit more pace, probably a bit more pressure than Ginevan. But, you know, you're getting... Ginevan would have seen the incumbent until Hill came along, but now he's actually fallen one further down. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had a great year. I mean, it, it's been, I think, a, well, obviously it was interrupted at the start, and I just don't think... It's almost like the headspace just isn't there this year. It's, Jeez, I wonder why that yeah, could be I mean, after last year it, AFL. could possibly be any sort of external influence on that. Um, no, how did he go in the VFL? I didn't look at the VFL. I kicked a goal. I don't know how well he did generally, but uh, kicked did a goal. Did he any attention or anything like that? Was no, that I didn't see enough, no. Oh, okay. Oh, look, I mean, I would love to see um, Ginevan back in that site. You don't kick, what are you, 40 odd goals or something last year? You yeah. don't do that by accident. You're not going to get that return out of Harrison. But, you know, if, if it's well, there as a bit of a, a rev up, well, not now, because he only kicked two. He's, he's not got 38 left in him. He might. Uh, bringing back, rushing back, Jeremy Howe and Jamie Elliott. Yeah, Elliott, fine. Um, Howe surprised me. I thought even the Howe in his interviews. Um, seemed to be consigned that he was coming back through the, the VFL. Um, yeah, it's an interesting... There's been a few players that they've taken some interesting uh, gambles with about uh, getting back in quickly. Yeah, I actually... Look, However, though, just before we continue, I thought Al actually did really well. Yeah. Um, so, for, I mean, I'm actually, what the fuck do we know? I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad he's back, but I'm surprised he's back. But I actually think it's a tactical error what they've done in bringing back Darcy Cameron after missing the bulk of the season. Lipinski, who's missed the whole season up to the Melbourne game, and now Howe, who's missed effectively the whole season. He played half the Geelong game. I know people go, well, they're senior players and all that sort of stuff, but if you look at like the buys, pl- uh, clubs coming off the buys, they had their momentum disrupted. They tend to struggle. Now you've got three players in there who are coming off you know, 12, 13-week breaks, and you're expecting them just to sort of drop them in. And I know that's happening because they've got injuries and suspension, side bottom and the going out, and we're relatively young in the bottom end, so they're trying to compensate by bringing these senior players in. But, oh, look, I don't think you're going to have too many in, particularly when you've got some non-performers in there or people not performing mm-hmm. enough. And, you know, Hoskin Elliott, okay, great, you played two and a half great minutes. Um but you can't have too many non-contributors. And I think at the moment, this is contributing to why they lapse at times. Yeah. Is the makeup of that side. Look, how did really well. Lipinski, I wouldn't have played for another month. I mean, I would have played him in the VFL. So mm. you just got to get touch back. You got to get mm. some fitness back. Um, same with Cameron. Cameron, I think, has been really mediocre. He had a good last quarter, but... Yeah, no, he's, he's struggled. 
I, I think the guy, well, the only rationale I can come up with is that they're playing that sort of long game with these guys about getting them and getting them hardened match fitness at, at, at senior level. You know, you, you, I still think you could do that through the VFL, but I think they, they're that keen on, on getting them back and getting them prepped for for a tilt come finals that they're, they're risking. It's a risky strategy, um, but I think they're willing to take that risk now with them to get them ready for that in a month, uh, in a couple of months' time. So compare this to 2 11 when we were like 12-1 or something at the same stage, and I thought back then, and I said it back then, was they should be resting some of these players to get them right for the finals. There's still 10 weeks to go, 10 games to go or something. So you've got plenty of time to do it. Yeah. If you bring them. Some of it's just urgency. Uh, we talked about they really probably needed Frampton with the size of Adelaide's forward line. Yeah, and that's what made Howe coming back in a, you know, a bit more of a head-scratcher than that too. I thought, you know, with Fogarty and um, Walker there, and they're two big body Until key four. forwards. Yeah, and that, that I thought we would have gone probably at least one, to, well, not that we have many, but we would have gone one big tall to come back there and, and stand because, like, Walker's, I mean, he's a very good forward. Um, he can turn blokes inside out, which we, we saw a little bit of. I, I think the tactic of it would be to stand someone near or in front of him or something to deny his run. And I thought Frampton would have been the perfect probably four for that. But for whatever reason, I mean, like uh, McRae says, that how can play long, tall, short, wide, skinny, fat, he can do it all. Um, but he went near, nowhere near those two, did he? No, I mean, he was playing on the wing at sometimes too, so... Mm. Yeah, no, it was interesting. I mean, but, but we won. We're 12 and 2. That's all that matters. But I mean, it's interesting too, you look at it, when you think, like two weeks ago, you would have said, okay, who are the players to lose their positions? You wouldn't have thought it'd be France. I would have thought Markov would be the one to go. Mm. And that's not a slight of Markov. I'm just saying in terms of seniority and the way they... I would have thought that, you know, you've got to have two genuinely tall defenders. And that would be France and the Moore. I think they need to encourage France to go for his marks a bit more. Um... You know, and more like those sort of games. That's why I think more shouldn't be playing on the last line of defense because you just you got tailed. So, um, you know, and then going forward, you got my check was pretty well held. Mm. The other smaller forward sort of, you know, chipped in. But then you had Ash Johnson who really struggled again for like I said, it was subbed for the second week and or second game in the row. Yeah, it's not a good sign. No, you know, and I know they'll say, oh, you know, you're in that best 23 and whatever stuff like that. He had a really nice tackle. He had a nice goal on the run, but he tends to disappear at times. So what would you do with him? Oh, I think he's got to go back to the VFL and try and get some consistent touch. There's elements to his game where he's obviously very laconic and that makes it probably look worse than it is. But there's just, you know, I think there are times that he was at the bottom of pack, he tries, but it just, it doesn't, come across and there's a couple um as effective i meant but there was a couple of times where like um he was in the right position and someone's just jumped across him and intercepted the mark yeah. and you think well you know if he ended up with three for that game because there was two i reckon that he um, elliot cut him off on one and there was another one where he ended up on his ass or he got flattened instead of and you think well they they were two very giveable um uh, giveable gettable um opportunities so if he'd finished with three he'd be probably singing his praises to a certain extent. Yeah. So it's just it's a fine line between how effective he can be with some of those, um, a little bit more experience, I think, just to know where to run to, where to stand. It'd take the edge off some of that laconicness as well. But yeah, as you were saying before, has he only played, what, 19 games of stubbing? Yeah, he hasn't you, played a lot. You can't be hypercritical of him, but at the moment, I just don't, I don't think he's doing enough to hold his spot. But... Yeah, unless McStay suddenly grows another finger, he's probably I'd give, I'd give safe Kruger, for a couple more. Give, well, yeah. I'd give Kruger a run. Actually, Kruger's no, only got nine games. You know what I'd actually consider doing with Johnson? I'd drop him to the VFL and play him at centre half back for a month and just say, you need to learn to yeah, stay switched on idea. and to actually follow a forward who's going to work hard and stuff like that. And you just need to... Because, it, it, again, it might just be his laconic, but it really seems at times he doesn't have the same intensity. And then other times like that tackle, he had a really good chase down tackle and then he, he you know, he just comes into the game. Whereas you look at my check, even when he's not in the game, he seems to be constantly trying to get into the game. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if they tried that with Johnson just to sort of go, look, you need to find out what it's a bit like on the other side and maybe that'll show you what you need to do more on this side. Yeah. I'd like to see Kruger. I thought once the go was out, they really should have said to McRae, Finley McRae or to Josh Carmichael, we're going to give you three weeks while he's out. 
Let's see what you can do because they're the guys I think they really need to be trialing to find out one, if they're going to be kept on for next year. And two, coming to the finals, the goalie's absence been, has been pivotal. You know, you go back to the Melbourne game and people are going, oh, well, they had Oliver out and we had the goalie out, so it cancels each other out. It's like, no, they killed us in the midfield, so Oliver wasn't going to add much more. Whereas our midfield can be problematic, so the guy would have added a lot more to that. Um, so I think they really need to find out what's the next generation. Uh, Carmichael and McRae, it. If they're not, then they're going to move, yeah, be moved on. But they need they need to be given continuity too. They can't just sort of come in for like a 15-minute burst as a sub and then expect them to you know have a really good impact. So they need to be given some time. in the, And I, I think we're spoiled that. Like we played McGuinness for one as a sub. Again, if you want to play McInnes, um, fine, but then I think you got to play him as a mid also. So they're not really getting a good look at these, the next generation of players, which is a bit of concern. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, how many of them are actually screaming pick me at uh, their VFL McCray's, performances? McCray's killing the well, he's, he's getting big numbers. I don't know. Look, I don't watch, I haven't watched any VFL really this year, so you know, I, I don't know really how good or bad or different he is. Like, but I said, you know, he, he seems to have no trouble getting the ball, but that can be an easy thing too in terms of uh, chipping oh, yeah, I, But I, I just think they need to find out because you get sort of guys... Harrison never really dominated the VFL. Um, I, I never even heard of him until he got called up. <laughs> so, but it's like that sort of thing. You Sometimes you can get guys whose form at the VFL is okay, but then they come up to the next level and with better players around them, they really appreciate yeah, yeah. And But just in terms... Look, our midfield got smashed. Um, you know, that third quarter, we were barely touching it, you know, and Nick Dacos, whenever he was on, he was the one turning the game for us, but that's like actually a concern that our midfield gets smashed to that extent. Both Cameron and Cox were pretty ineffectual in the ruck until that last quarter and Cameron won a few and stuff like that. But for mine, one of the biggest concerns about this side is just those momentum switch uh, switches. So Adelaide kick seven, you go back to that St Kilda game, we're up by four or something goals. They came back and we looked hopeless for a period. Essendon and Anzac Day, they killed us. They got five goals up. You go back to last year against Essendon that second time, we looked really good for the first half and then they just ran over us and then we had to come back late. Carlton, third quarter last year, same thing. It's happened consistently. When the momentum switches, we really struggle to arrest it and that's like a really big concern, I think, because it's like the, the preliminary final last year, you know. Sydney got six goals up and then we just spent the whole game playing catch-up. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not a way to win finals. No, no. We, we, we seem to we we do play a very consistent bookend style game where we, we we have these big starts and then we we build a bit of a buffer, then we taper off and then we build to that really big ending and that's as it. well. And I don't know whether you want to make that your thing. No, that should definitely. Um, I think it, it, that's a good get out of jail strategy, but you just don't want to rely on it all the time. We saw, like you said. Last year, we did it 48 times and failed to do it when it really mattered, which yep. was finals. Well, I looked at the stats for the year. So by quarter by quarter, so adding them all up, in first quarters, we kicked 48-51, 339, to 27-37, 199. Second quarter, 44-35, 299, to 35-42, 252. So we're winning those quarters and we're really dominating the first quarter. But then the third quarter, we've kicked 37 45, 267 to 43 38, 296. So we've collectively lost the third quarter. And then the last quarter, we've kicked 58 34, 382 to 26 47, 203. So we're absolutely obliterated mm. last quarters. But as you said, it's not a formula to actually um, be employing, in, particularly in finals. And that third quarter, we look really vulnerable. You know, whenever we play sides, it, there's that concern. I mean, even Port Adelaide when we smashed them earlier in the year. They did come back as a third quarter. We just actually held them at bay. Uh, but these other teams, they get that run on and we really struggle to stop it. And that's mm. actually a massive concern. It is. You know, you, whether it's just the way that we we manage the fatigue that we are, uh, an endurance type of side, but we run out of a little bit of puff by third quarter, but we, we re-energise for that last. I don't know whether you could actually train... Oh, that no, type it, of thing. It, could I, just be, it just seems a little bit more than coincidental that, it, we, well, that we can it dig could, ourselves it out. It could just be it takes a little while to get going after the halftime break. You mm. know, I mean, that's always been a concern when you have that, especially when you've been running hot and then you come down. It's hard to get it back up and it might take just a quarter to do that. Because the other sort of strange factor is I think every side coming off a bye over the last couple of weeks has lost. lost. Yeah, but obviously we're playing a side. Someone else, I think, that didn't buy, didn't um, play, play, yeah, coming off a bye. So that's a 50-50 argument either way. Um, but... 
it clearly has an impact when you've got that break in, in momentum and all that sort of thing in terms of where your, your season's sort of chugging. And we've been, our performances probably the last three games haven't been superb, even though we've had a good win in one of them and we lost one and the one before that was the one before that. Um, whether we were starting to sort of feel, um, whether we're changing our training load as well to sort of build up um, a lot more endurance coming into the back end of the season. There, there could be a number of factors here that, that impact these these performances. Yeah, but we'll be, I mean, again, it's just happened regularly, so there's something that's impacting impacting them regularly. Uh, umpiring. It, look, it, it wasn't completely shit. It was... It was, um, it was completely shit. <laughs> but, but we won the free kick count, so we've got nothing to complain 21, about. 21 but... So, I mean, Adelaide... How some... did we go in April? Um, do we, we do it all right in April with the umpiring? No, we didn't. So, so the... uh, we, we're not going back again and revisiting that? It seems no. to be a popular thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So, I, the AFL's released a statement saying, you know, there was some decision that umpires should have paid to... That was the high tackle that Elliot did on... Um, uh, Dawson? Daw- was it Dawson? Yeah, Dawson. Jack Dawson yeah. from Titanic? Yeah. He, yeah. He said his heart will go on. He hit him that hard. So, there's this free that will show here over us, which is the rank and... Oh, good. I throw. love movies. You know, when um, Noble tackles him? Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, it swings both ways. And look, it, and there's that classic statement um, about, you know, they put the whistle away in these, these close games. I think it's one of those examples where they just started letting things run just for the... The, 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 the game was just absolutely bonkers frenetic at that point. Um, apparently, though, the umpires don't have clear view of this, even, well, even though despite the fact there's 78... Of them in different positions. Though there was one, I think, you know, I reckon Noble deserved, um, uh, he should have gotten a whole the ranking, all yeah. paid for him with that tackle at the end. And like, I think they said they didn't have a clear view. It might have been that one, who knows? Oh, the, the clear no, view. No, the ranking one they were in front of. Was, it was a get out of jail. But the thing is, too, like, yeah, the boundary, where I was sitting, the boundary rider um, was, was right there, and in front of him was the field umpire. And they had nothing but a fucking clear view. You had 20,000 people around me that we could clearly see it as well. Uh, it's, it's staggering what they what they do and don't see. But that's also like when Mitchell got poleaxed after the mark and the umpire Matt Stevic just didn't do anything. And it was, well, that's, 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 that's Matt, normal. That's Matt Stevic. <laughs> yeah, geez, what a shock he was going to pay that. And it was another umpire, Meredith, who said, that's a 50. And then they paid it. And Josh Gabalich on AFL.com.au apparently says it was a dubious 50 so you can clean up a player after he's taken the mark, and that's fine, but Josh Gablish calls it dubious. I mean, Cox should have got one also when he took that mark, and then he was tackled, he was just standing there, wasn't doing anything. So, I mean, there's a lot of ones they miss when they're standing right there. And then, I, I, well, you also had Dacos and Pendlebury having to explain down by what the 50-metre penalty is. Well, the, I mean, it actually really it was funny, because I recall we played um, St Kilda in about 1990, and it was really close. <laughs> Someone went to kick forward to Dacos, and... Like, Dacos' opponent was on the ground. So he's, he's obviously clipped him. And Dacos has turned around to the umpire and said he's hit me or something like that. So Dacos is obviously retaliating, but he got the free. Okay. <laughs> and he went back and he sl- he passed it to uh, Alan Richardson who kicked the goal. But just to remind me of, like, that's exactly what I thought of when Nick Dacos is going, this is a fucking free, it's a 50. You've got to pay it here. It's not a mark to my check. You've got to keep bringing me forward. So, like, he totally took over and directed traffic. Um, and I even saw he took the whistle off the umpire. He goes, you don't deserve this, mate. Oh, so I've actually been watching a lot more games and I'm I should say I'm surprised I'm not the umpiring is a total shit standard and it's what does surprise me is how many teams get railroaded in a game like you go back a couple of weeks ago Geelong Port Port the umpiring against Port at a home grain which is fucking terrible and this is happening really regularly I'm watching games going this side's just getting absolutely murdered but yeah um, do you know what happened though with that, that, that Adelaide one it was was missed with eight seconds to go, right in front of their goals or something. They're right in front of me. It was right in front of me. Right in front of right me. Right in front of me. Uh, the Collingwood social media team, the digital team, they do a great job. Do they? They do a fantastic oh, job. Right. All right, thanks for that. Yep. What else? What other points you got? Yeah. Uh, but they ran a little sort of poll. If you could take anyone from the 2002 squad, who would you take? And they asked all the players. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the bulk of the players said Anthony Rocker. Yeah, and rightly so. Do you think that's like a tacit admission that, hey, we are lacking this player right now? No one said Nathan Buckley would have been the best midfielder in the league in that season. And then a couple of others I think would have been Smokey, would have been James Clement and Shane Wakeland and Simon Prestigio Como as a, like, you know, the monster defenders. What about Di Martino? 
No, probably not. No. So, you know, you're missing that Wakel and Preston Giacomo type who can just sort of lock down um, a player. Uh, and Clement's just superb rebound can play on the tall small. And then Rocker, obviously, is just a monster key forward. So, do you think that's sort of like an admission that this is what we're really missing? I think it is. They were wicky at the camera when they kept saying Rocker too. No, nah, look, I mean, you slot Rocker into that um, into that side now, we'd be unstoppable. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it, it really is that glaring admission that is, apparently it's difficult, it's a difficult position to fill. Because it must be, because we haven't had a crack at it for 20 years. Well, it's hard to fill it when you don't recruit someone <laughs> to fill it. I mean, they recruited McStay... Uh, you know, McVeigh's a good he's not a soldier. Same, not he's the same not, ballpark. No. no, no, you know, and then they've gone for these left field solutions like Ash Johnson. You know, Mychek was recruited as a defender. Uh, they're not going to Will Kelly. I don't know if they, they tried him there for a little bit. So they really, they haven't really sort of spent big. No, on a and I'm going to say spent big. I mean, like you go back to the Jaden Stevenson draft. Uh, Norton, who's at the Dogs, he was a Collingwood, lifelong Collingwood fan. So Collingwood could have taken him and tried you know, as a key forward. They didn't. So it's just even in the draft, like that Peter Wright was in one draft also. He was in the Goey draft, actually. So they've just sort of ignored that position entirely, mm. which is really, I don't know. No, I don't know either. I don't think anyone really knows. Yeah. So I, I actually found that really interesting. They just all, and like they're all saying, I'll pep straight away. And the only two who would have played with him would have been um, Sidebottom and Pendlebury in the existing squad nobody else would have played with him you know he, he was retired by 209 so the rest of the squads arrived after that so I actually just found that really really mm. fascinating 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 um we got a criticism on YouTube did we? yes is this our opportunity to tell them to fuck off? yes <laughs> cool I, I enjoyed this part so this is after the king's birthday pretty ordinary summary after sitting 11-2 on top of the ladder if you were offered that at the start of the year, you take it every day of the week. First, plus last viewing for me. We can all sit back and criticise after a loss. Bye. I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, thanks for that, mate. That was that was insightful. Um, I didn't think we went all that hard that week either. No, so it's I um, think amazing. Either. I think you did pose the question about do you think we'd be... Um, eleven and what were we let that eleven and two at that stage? Yeah, I said I thought I said we thought you know I thought would be thirteen zero. So yeah, um, no, I mean we definitely you know probably didn't think we were. I think we're more than happy that we are. Um, but that's not to say that you completely pull the wool over your own eyes and ignore the things that could come to bite you at the end of the year when it comes finals time. And they're the things I think that we like to focus on more than anything rather than uh, having a bit of a, a sook session. We what? leave that to our to the Adelaide supporters. What the fuck have we accomplished? Great, we're 11 and 2. Well, at that time, we're 11 and 2 or 12 and 2. What have we accomplished? And it's great that we're there and we've got to put ourselves in the best position, but these fucking people who just sort of say, oh, no, you can't criticise it, everything's going rosy. I mean, you go back a couple of years ago, and I won't name names, you got people who swoop down on us because we said, oh, let's challenge the board. We've got to fucking have changed the club. And people, you know, people go, oh, no, no, they all know what they're doing. Why are you enjoying what you're enjoying now? A big part of that is David Hadley, the Collingwood Turtle, who started a fucking petition off his own back coming out of that group mm-hmm. to instigate change and to show the club, hey, your supporters are genuinely agitated at where you are and the way you're treating them. Now, if you didn't do that, who knows where the club would be sitting now? Would it, you know? And there's people who are now celebrating how great the club were back then. We're criticising people like David Hatley and you know everyone associated with challenging the club for change. Maybe you'd prefer to be like fucking Carlton and just you know telling one another, hey, it's all still going great. And that shifts me. It's like every time we look at it, like we don't look like we're going shit. It's just like, hey, how do we get better from this? And if that's a fucking problem, maybe you should take it up with Craig McRae too because he pretty much says at every press conference. That's it. Yeah, we're, we're a work in progress. Yeah. We're always looking for ways to improve. You know, and... Should he just say that we're happy? We're 12 and 2, we're happy, that's it? Well, if you're going to say that, then it's like, well, why would you look at any... Why would you look at the third quarter no, fader? You look at, um, in his press conference um, that we watched tonight, you know, he, he talked about... Um, fuck, I can't remember what he talked about. It was a good point that we made. It'll come to me in a second. No, he talked about like we, were, you know, we did well, but you got to look at that third quarter. He goes, it's just little things we have to change. No, we have to get better. Yeah, there was there was one other point he made. It'll come to me later. Ah, it won't come to you. Ah, fuck it. Let's and... just move on. I'm, I'm getting no, but, old and senile. But it just it, it just frustrates me because 
no matter how good you think you are, you can aspire to be fucking better. And if you're just happy with where you are, then fuck you. You're going to stagnate and people are going to pass you. Other clubs are going to fucking pass you. Yeah, there was, it, was, it was around that pain point. Maybe if we clip it up later, we can clip it up later to emphasize no, that's it. that's not happening. Otherwise, uh, I can't fucking remember. No. Maybe this guy's got a good point. <laughs> he didn't call you seeing all. He just said, you know. Well, that's not far away. Last viewing for me. Oh, please don't go. How, how will I sleep tonight? How will I live my life? Knowing you're not watching. Jeez. Um, Gary Rowan hit on Jeremy Cameron. You want you hit on him? Yeah. You, Is he you, one of those? You want Gary Rowan rubbed out for cleaning up his teammate? No, I, they, no. But the, the thing that I see with that is, I don't know, we'll be talking about this. Yeah, I just threw it out there because you were pretty livid on it that night. It, it's, well, the thing is, you know, from, and, and it's not like... Do you want to hear what you said? What? You said pretty ordinary hit after sitting eleven and two on your teammate. <laughs> if you, yeah, I, I wrote to Rowan and said it's the last time I'm watching him. He's best on ground too that game. Yeah, no, he was very good. It's good to see him play well against someone other than us for a change. <laughs> um, the thing is with that hit is like it, it, it's it's reckless um, or it was careless. Uh, it laid someone out who got concussed and will miss this week. These are all the qualifiers that if he was wearing the opposition jumper, yeah. he'd be staring at five weeks out. Now, there, there's no, absolutely no way that you're ever going to rub out your own team or, or get rubbed out for rubbing out your own teammate unless you're caught in the showers and there's a camera. Um, but the thing is, the action, the, the end result, should have qualified him for four to five week holiday. Yeah. But you don't get it. But the thing is, like, surely if everything is justified as being a, a careless and yeah. accidental act... Then why is this one tread any differently? Yeah, there was one in the Fremantle Essendon game where an Essendon player again clipped his own player, and I think it was actually Luke, Luke Darcy made just a good point, just saying I think it's a really good illustration. That, you know, sometimes shit happens, and, and, and I think yeah. that's that, that's a good counter. Yeah, You're exactly. And, right. You know, he's going. You got grown men. You know, hundred kilos running full tilted ball. It's a collision sport. Sometimes it's just going to happen, and you can't always look at like is there malice in it or whatever. Sometimes accidents do genuinely fucking happen. Hmm. So that's, uh, uh, yeah. And look, Grant Thomas had a, a fair old um, crack at it all night and next day and about three weeks later. And he, I think his points were pretty valid. He got torn apart, naturally, for, you know, for... Coaching uh, St Kilda. Well, yeah. yeah. You look at it from the perspective of, you know, it's illogical what you're saying. However, though, there is a sense of logic to it. You can't deny the arguments that are being made. That all it takes in, in any of those um, circumstances, you flip the jump around, the punishment's pretty severe. Other than that, it's an accident. So yeah. it, 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 the accidental stuff should be drawn more into this rather than just a flat, well, you're fucked um, in terms of your penalty because you hit an opposition player. You've got to factor in more about what the circumstances around it. I don't think anyone actually goes out there and lines anyone up to iron them out. I think they still do occasionally. No, but not with yeah, the intent, really, like, yeah. I'm going to fucking... Well, unless I drive your head to the ground and you're concussed and get well, off, well, I'm, I'm Gaffin, not happy. Brayshaw, so that was, you know... <laughs> Well, you have your exceptions, but yeah, yeah, that that, that sort of yeah to a, to an extent it annoyed me. But again, it's that sort of you know, irregularity about the way things are adjudicated. Oh, look, I totally agree. I, I think it's fucking bullshit. And this whole thing about determining penalty by outcome. If you don't want these things happening, just then outlaw the action. If like the bump is a really good example. You don't want the bump, then just fucking just outlaw it. Don't say oh well, but then if you hit someone in the head, then it's a risk. Because there's also got a factor in the. Hey, you could hit someone who's a little bit more vulnerable than someone else, or you know. So it's like, well, if you hit that guy, he would have got straight back up, but I hit that guy and he's out now and concuss for a week. So it just, I think it's fucking ridiculous. You got to accept that sometimes shit does happen. Yep. Uh, what would you do with West Coast? Well, there's a little league competition in Claremont. I think they'd be good for. They, uh, could, they could probably get their hands on the ball and do something. A 170 point loss, just a narrow loss there. <laughs> That was embarrassing. I mean, you know, we were watching it and um, everyone was rooting for the record to be broken. Um, I don't know what that was meant to achieve. It just felt like you've got to get something out of this viewing disaster. And, you know, that's a, they're, a, they're a disgrace. And apparently um, it's not Simpson's fault. Oh, they've had a lot of injuries, but, you know, I think... You, you, it shits me. I mean, like, I heard Eddie McGuire saying, well, maybe they do this sort of a priority pick. And this is a guy who's oh, they, they, that. They chose this path. Yeah. They traded out for, for all those players. Oh, they all traded their picks. Yeah. They knew what they were getting no, themselves no, in you, for. You cannot turn around with your hands out now. You can fucking no. wallow down the arse end there. No, and, it, you know, I think clubs who mismanage themselves to this extent, instead of trying to help them out, you should punish them. So, stuff like, you look at, like, West Coast going, well, 
you don't deserve that flag. That should just be reversed, that fucking... That, that should just be turned around. So turn that around and just give it to someone more deserving. Um, maybe the team who you beat that day. Just as a fucking... Just as a lesson that you don't do this. So I don't know who they played that day, but anyway. It was Sydney. Um, was it? Maybe they should punish them by making them wear Carlton jumpers for the rest of the season. Maybe they should punish them by making them play an intra-club game. Or maybe they should be made to wash Keyes' shorts for the rest of the season. <laughs> uh, Gold Coast this week, over there. Oh, this has got 10 goal loss written all over it. We, they usually match up pretty well against us. Yeah, I mean, we they, they beat us there, didn't they? A couple of years ago? Yeah, but that well, was... Well, that, that was the year where, 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 where we could have beat They beat us here. No, yeah. They beat us here in 21 but on they, the Bucks. They have beaten us. They were the last... We were the last ones to hold out against them for a while there. Yeah. Um, no, we, yeah, lost them prior, we lost them prior to that. They're, um, Remember we lost them years ago when... Um, yeah, but we were in all sorts of shit then, weren't we? No, no, I think we are still sort of... Anyway, let's just move on from that. <laughs> well, it all blurs into one, you know, when you're, when you're watching us lose was great it, I can't remember if it was McCaffrey or Clint Young that ran into the goal, goal and yeah. then when I hit the post. Yeah. Um, well, it might have been Callum Brown. Well, he, was there one also, like, there. they went for a pass and then McCaffrey... Oh, anyway, it, there's good memories, good times, good, good times, times. Yeah. good times. <laughs> Wish we could bottle these moments. Um, I mean, if you you know, if you knew back then you'd be sitting twelve and two today, you'd be complaining. Oh, I, that I don't even think about these things. I'm I'm as happy as Larry, <laughs> who, whoever he is, Larry, yeah. Larry Hagen. So, uh, um, yeah, what are we talking about? Uh, Gold, Gold, Gold Coast over there. Yeah, are we good? Um, was that at Carrara? Oh fuck, well, I don't know. Metricon. Yeah, Metro, what Metricon is it? Um, look, I think we'll probably. I think this is be the game that undoes us and we lose by 10 goals, to be okay. honest. I'm actually a little bit worried. They do match up well against us. They have a pretty good midfield. Playing over there is a bit more of a trial. I think, you know, we've been a little bit stagnant lady, lately. Uh, st- stagnant lady? <laughs> um, we've been a little bit stagnant in, the, in some of our ball movement and it, ha- it hasn't had the dare and the freneticism until it's really been challenged. Well, what are you talking about this for? We're 12-2. I'm 12-2, I know. Oh, you're right. We could be two and twelve. You wouldn't take that, would you? If somebody offered you two and twelve at this time, no, would you take that? No, 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 no. That would be terrible. No, no. no. Um, yeah. Look, I, 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 the guy obviously got one more week out. We don't know about side bottom. They stay sort of a little bit. Side bottom still meant to be two weeks away, so I think they're going to come back for the dogs game surely. Yeah. So, but we don't. One of them is. But I would play Kruger. I, I'd, I'd certainly give it a look. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you can drop Ash and bring Kruger in, and even if Kruger doesn't make it through the first quarter and it obliterates um, himself, uh, I don't think you've lost anything. Oh, look, honestly, I'd make two changes, and I know they're not going to do it. I, the Hosk and Elliot, look, I, you play five good minutes in eight weeks, and people go, oh, that's what we pick in. It's like, great. <laughs> Hopefully that next five minutes will come in the grand final. What about something? all those hospital handballs he dishes out? You know, and then just, there's players where you've got to be looking at the game. Well, if they're not contributing enough, then we need to look at better options. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, Hoskin Lee has probably had a few good patches here. And now I'm sure he runs the defensive lines really well. But it surprises me that he's remained an incumbent in that side with his current form. Now, like if he went to the VFL and showed really good form, I have no problem with him coming back. But just on, you know, shown form right now, I'm surprised he keeps his spot. He's obviously fulfilling some role. Well, I think we know what it is, but it's it's something that's it's that keeps him in there. Whether it's seniority or experience, or we just don't have anyone of that size to cover, uh, whatever it is that he's been going- tasked to do, I, I don't know. But he, whatever he's doing, uh, whatever photos he holds. Whether the fact that he's the reason we're twelve and two and we've got no problems, um, well, you take that if, if you yeah, want. You that take, yeah, I think that's, 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 that's his selection policy. Yeah. I think they look at him and they'll say, "You'll take that one. Yeah. You'll take him, won't you?" Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a mystery. I mean, the one actually, one guy who could replace him there is Markov. He could play a very similar role because you play Noble, Quainor, um, How. You haven't got the stats. They're on my phone. Get get my phone. No. But someone tweeted today just on Markov about um, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, he's disposable question mark about it, and yet he's. He's had, well, it's 81%, 90%, yeah. 95%, 100%, 150% yeah. at one point. You'd take and, that at the start yeah, of the season. Yeah, I'd take that at the start yeah. of the season. I'd take that. And he said that um, he said he thinks he's good for 13 too. I mean, he's thinking ahead, Markov. Yeah. He doesn't rest on his laurels like right. some players. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a shock. There. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, I'm, I'm rapidly become a fan of Markov. He doesn't put a foot wrong. 
No. Or, or, or two feet wrong, to be no, honest. Well, he's got the balance. It's like a cat with whiskers. I think that's it. Yeah. You know, like he knows cats. the spaces he yeah. fits through because yeah. of that moustache. Yeah. And you know what space he fit through? 12 and 2. <laughs> but you take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Take that. Um, any final thoughts? Uh, 12 and 2. Would you I'll, take that? I'll take that. <laughs> I'd take it too. Yeah. Problem solved. Um, no, look, I think, to be honest, we should win this. Yeah. And, and not super comfortable. I think at this point of the year, um, and McRae made a comment. I can't remember what it was, but it was a good one. <laughs> but it's about um, everyone's qualifying at the moment, and we're, we're certainly oh, yeah, not yeah. qualified. That could have even been my point. I might have been trying yeah. to remember. But the thing is, this this stage of the season, I think the wins are just important. It doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't matter. You, know. you just got to keep winning till you're in that point where you're locked in. And look, our, our goal, our first goal, should be eighteen and two. Yeah, because you take that. I will take that definitely. But we need to be not only qualify for the A, but we need to lock in top, top two. Top four, yeah. And no, not top four, top two, because well, we want to be hosting Yeah, you know, well, it depends finals. who the other side we're playing. Well, I think one of them is going to be definitely Brisbane, but, and I don't want to go to the Yeah. So I think, you know, and that's got to be the first sort of, the first part of your checklist for a flag tilt, is you really want the best advantages you can give by playing at home this year. It, it's going to be paramount to win those. And at the moment, I think we're just ticking boxes in some respects, just to eke out those wins. So you're surprised that, like, McRae, you know, he's going to even though we're, we're 12 and 2, you know, we could still miss finals, we could lose every game. We wouldn't take that, though. We wouldn't, we ta- wouldn't take that. Isn't that being negative? You know, is that the last time you watch a... Oh, that's the last press- time I'm listening to McRae. Oh, that's it. That's it. Well, I'm done with him. I'm I mean, moving on. I'm surprised that Mark Robinson was there going, but you're 12 and 2, you take that. You take that. I think he's going to um, he's going to write an article about that. Oh, It'll good. be a three-pager. Oh. I heard he's starting a, a boy band called Take That. I was just trying to work out how to work that in, but uh, I thought, no, that's just too stupid, but thanks. Anyway, that's it from us. And we'll take that. Yep, later. I can't see us losing the flag now. I hit the thing. I'll take that. I'll take it too. I'll take it. I'll take it.